to YouTube. This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversations. So let's get started. Okay, so what are we talking about this week? You've got all the notes. And... <laughs> we are going to be discussing uh, three different strategies when you are practicing the ketogenic lifestyle, but your loved ones or family members are not. Okay, so st three strategies for when you're doing keto, but your family is not. That is correct. I All guess right. we talk about this because I, I just saw a comment about this the other day. I just saw somebody talking about how their family has pizza night, but they don't have anything. I think they had discovered the um, chicken crust pizza or something to that it's effect. It's very common. Yeah, very common. so it, this is a real thing and uh, people deal with this all the time so this is what why we're talking about this and we have discussed this once before in the past but it's been quite some time and obviously we're still getting comments and people sure. still talking there's about it. always very relevant. there's always people coming on keto all the time right so uh, the first point is so your family's not practicing keto with you here's one strategy you can use you can say eat it or starve so this is the most tough love of the strategies that That's we're going to be discussing probably tonight. how I would go. <laughs> it is the most extreme. <laughs> if the world was, it was all up to me. That's where you clear out your cabinets, you only cook ketogenic foods, that's all yeah. there is. If they want something carbolicious, they have to eat it elsewhere. They have Work, to hide school, it and put it somewhere McDonald's else. <laughs> in the middle of the night. It's I right. don't know. <laughs> Not your problem. <laughs> they have to eat it when they aren't at home. Yeah. And you know, when we started keto, we did not, um, because we did not clean out all our cabinets. We did not throw nope. away all of our food because we do have kids, children, uh, who are not doing keto. And we try to make better choices, of course, because we have sure. information, but sure. yes. And when we first began the ketogenic lifestyle, we were not living together. We each had our own households. Right. Right. And so neither one of us did that, even I though... Didn't throw, I did not throw away all my food. Yeah. Um, but but I also didn't have problem going back and, you know, like getting stuff from that wasn't keto. So I don't know what that was all about. Probably just because I was really committed to it mm -hmm. and we were doing it together. So, but some people, you know, you'll hear, especially if you're, if you're starting keto, that you want to just get rid of everything and, you It know, does help avoid cravings and temptations sure. of course if you just don't have those foods you around. know yourself yeah you know yourself and if you can do that but but yeah. obviously this is going to cause the most friction sure. as well if if your family members are not on board i would say probably the 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 one way that this would absolutely need to work is if you were deciding to practice the ketogenic lifestyle because you were having extreme health problems if you were extremely diabetic or sure. you know you were on dialysis or you were going to practice the keto lifestyle as maybe an aid in your fight against cancer or something like that, then hopefully your family would be on board and support you if your health was in danger and you needed to go this kind of extreme. Sure. You should be able to rely on them for that kind of support. That would be probably the, the main reason I would think that this would be essential. Yeah. But like we mentioned before, this strategy may not work for everyone. Yeah, it may not. You may not want to go down that road. So the next thing is, next strategy is to mix it up. Right, which is basically what we have practiced mm -hmm. these last four years. I began the ketogenic lifestyle in September of 2016, and CJ did not join me until December. So you were coming over to my house at least several times a week to eat. And for a period of time, I was making non-ketogenic side dishes to go with what I was making. And then at a certain point, he just asked me to stop. That he didn't yeah. feel that that was make something sense. I should need to be doing. He was coming over there. I was making meals. He could benefit from this lifestyle also. So then I stopped doing it. And then yeah. you've been ketogenic ever since. Yeah, I needed to lose <clears> weight <throat> anyway, so... Right, and you were diabetic, right. so it was... And he had already been working on weight loss. You were seeing a nutritionist, so this was already in his wheelhouse. It was already something that he wanted to do, so... Yeah, but, you know, mixing it up, that's, again, like Sarah said, this, what, we, what this channel is about is we try to give you options 
things you not, can do. Right. Yeah. And not only options for you, but things that your family will like as well. Exactly. And we get comments all the time about, so we got a comment the other day about somebody's grandmother not liking meatloaf. <laughs> they had or never, their, or, never liked they had never liked meat meatloaf and yeah. and or had eaten meatloaf in the past and she made it for her 85 year old grandmother who absolutely loved it yeah. so that it is actually the goal of our channel is to provide you with foods that have fond memories or that are family style foods mm -hmm. so they are things you could serve in a mixed crowd at parties or sure. for your own family and they find it yummy enough that they don't really miss it or that they're easy enough that a small side dish such as tortillas or potatoes or noodles or whatever could be added in this mix it up style and still make it so that you aren't enjoying yummy foods that you like and mm -hmm. keeping it ketogenic. So Right. And we've taken I mean I've we've taken plenty of keto food to functions or gatherings and the, you know the people that aren't doing keto eat it before we do. You, know, if <laughs> you might not get it. If we're not, if, you know, if we're not, if we're not, we don't move fast enough. The carbies will eat it all. <laughs> we did that one time with. Uh, it was like when we first started keto, we went over to your sister's house with you the, had four the, layer the, dessert. the four layer dessert. Yeah, four layer four layer dessert. God, I don't and think all, I think we might have shared a piece. Yeah, we <laughs> were like the only keto people there, and all the carbies like just devoured it. They didn't even eat their food. <laughs> they right. Somebody, they had like purchased a cake. Yeah. You know, I think it was a Mother's Day function and they had actually purchased like a yeah. big sheet cake and it didn't get touched. So it's yeah. quite funny. But of course, obviously this is the more flexible of our strategies. And it also, of course, helps, you know, if you're further along in your journey, if sure. you're a little more resistant to willpower, this is going to be a better strategy for you. If you have, you know, a really hard time avoiding things, this might be a little bit more difficult. But yep. it does get easier over time. Another suggestion is perhaps if you're going to still buy foods that are not ketogenic, maybe buy some things that aren't really like your red light foods. Say, say your kids like chips and they're okay you know, with potato chips or tortilla chips, but tortilla chips are your red light food, maybe buying potato chips. So they're still getting a few things that aren't ketogenic, but it's not going to be like screaming at you from the pantry, eat me, eat me, eat yeah, me. Yeah, that's so. a good tip. That's so, a good tip. Just things you don't personally care for can be a, a tip if you want to keep Yeah, you get you get around. them the foods you don't like anyway. Right, because it's like, let I, them eat it. I can care less. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> so, even sound good. I don't want that. So. And that might sound bad, but that's a strategy. That you got to do what you got to do because right. we're, you know, we're here... This channel is dedicated to supporting other people on this lifestyle and so of course we're going to take the ketogenic route if we can and help you because yeah. that's what we're here but for. We buy our kids all kinds of stuff and there's some stuff like they like those hot Cheetos or hot whatever. Anything hot. And I, won't even, I, I won't buy them for them now because I don't think they're good for their stomach. Right. Um, they only get them. Keto or early. not keto. Yes. I just don't think consuming stuff their age. And well, and being hot. on this lifestyle, just, yeah, there there is <laughs> a certain change that you go through just as an individual, yeah. and there are certain things that you buy less of, or you make uh, better choices for your non even for your non family. family, right? And right. they learn, like um, you know, we had just eaten dinner, and they ate earlier. But my older daughter came and I had some cubed ham in a package and she asked me, Mama, is this for a recipe? Is this keto food? Are you going to be eating this? So if your family is thoughtful, they are going to learn what are your foods or, you know, foods you might want sure. in the refrigerator and, you know, choose something that is, you know, maybe more geared towards their lifestyle. But I do encourage them to eat, like when I make them a meal, Mama, do I have to eat the macaroni? Do I have to eat the bread? No, you do not. I want you to eat the meat. I want you to eat the vegetables. The rest of that stuff I don't care about. So they have learned what's important for me that they consume and that they're getting adequate protein and adequate fat. So. All right, All right. what's the last tip? The last one is double duty. And this is the most difficult. And in a nutshell, it's you have all the garbage foods in the world in your house and you end up making two of everything. Yeah. Yeah, and I think when, so like Sarah said, we started in two different households. And so Izzy used to come over and I used to make two different meals. I would have whatever I was eating and then I would make something for her. 
But then eventually she started eating. As time goes by, at, almost all the time when Izzy come to visit, yeah. comes to visit, she will eat. What I mean, she's learned to love zucchini noodles. Yeah, things she'll with cauliflower, eat a lot of the know. stuff that we eat. Now she don't um, doesn't eat everything, but she and does a lot eat of times a lot she'll of request. It. Like she'll ask me to make calzone, yeah. or she'll ask me to make you know something that is a ketogenic dessert, and she'll actually request that as something right. that she would like to have when she comes to stay. So there can be a gradual <laughs> bringing them to the dark side of the force. <laughs> yeah. So but there I is started, a change. I started with making two meals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but we over time, were... over the four years, it has, it has changed. Yeah. So yeah, you can, and there are a lot of experiences. We get a lot of comments. Um, you read success stories where people have gradually blended their family members eventually onto this lifestyle. And sometimes by just, living this lifestyle yourself, you know, they they can start to see the light. Yeah, and sometimes what you need to do, one of the best strategies, and this is not on here, is just that you just go ahead and be successful on keto yourself. Right. Do what you got to do. You start losing weight. You start having success. And then all of a sudden, you know, your husband looks at you and say, wow, you look pretty good over there. And, I, or I've never or seen you be this, you know, right. stick to to a lifestyle before. Maybe they have seen you go on different plans yeah. before and not done well or fallen off the wagon, if you will, or regained weight, you know, in whatever um, diet plan you have sure. followed before. So maybe when they see your success, then they will be like, hmm. Maybe I should give that a try. I have a few pounds to lose or I don't feel yeah. good or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So a lot of times that's, and I think that actually should be strategy number four is you do. Just live the lifestyle. Live the life. You do what's best for you and let all that other stuff work out. And then a lot of times your family will want to join you right. in this lifestyle as well. And then especially if they start tasting the food and they're like, well, this isn't bad. This isn't what. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you might have to hide it. This isn't like what I thought it was. You know, this is, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm a big stickler about not sharing keto food with non-keto people. I, don't, don't I, your, your keto pearls before swine. I say that in our house all the time. Now, you're, see, she's a mom. Well, a and, lot of times back when you were not doing as much teleworking and there were still like weekly office gatherings, yeah. you know, I would say, well, do you want me to make blah, blah, blah? And, and, and CJ would always say, no. Because I don't want you to make that yummy food and nobody's going to nope. appreciate it and I won't get any and nope. yeah, so. But that's just me. I'm pretty radical about, <laughs> about it. So anyway, you don't have to go to that extent, but no, you know, but, you can if you want to. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. But the main thing here is you being confident with your keto, keto journey and ketoing on regardless of what because some people the biggest naysayers are their family members and that can be very difficult and if you don't have support that is where you need to look for support outside of your family at least initially and that's what you know places like our channel facebook groups other places where you can get success stories are there to help you through those times when maybe your family members are the ones that you're having the most difficulty with. So actually that should be tip number four. It should. Tip number four should be if you're not finding support at home, yes, you can take those other strategies, but go find the support that you yes, need. Yes, because and, we all need support. Yeah, and so as Sarah mentioned, there's all kinds of ways to do it and you can find the support you need to be successful and again like we mentioned before a lot of times if you keep persevering persevering they sometimes people will eventually join you because they can't refute results right least, um, or so. even if they just see how much it means to you sure and that you're happier and you feel better and you look better and hopefully your family wants you to be happy and support your happiness sure. so sometimes sure. just you are your own best success story. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So this was a pretty short keto conversation. Uh, we hope that uh, it helps somebody. I think we must have spoken to this for some reason. So we hopefully that it, it speaks to someone who may be going through this or maybe you're just starting keto. If you're new here, we do these keto conversations every Wednesday. We talk about lifestyle, keto lifestyle topics. Sometimes we do food unboxings once or twice a month. Um, but most of the time we are talking about uh, keto lifestyle topics to help you be successful, uh, not only with the keto diet, 
diet, but to help you also transition to living keto as a lifestyle to improve your health, to lose weight, to improve your health, and all the other benefits that go with it. And if you would like to talk about your own personal you know, stories on this subject, then people can then go into the comments and read how you've handled That's maybe true. some of these family situations. That can be very encouraging. It encourages me because I read and answer the comments, but it can also encourage maybe other viewers who are perhaps some, having some of these issues and then they can see what you've done and maybe how they can handle it so we can support each other that way. All right. All right. So consider subscribing if you're new here. Uh, if you're watching, if you've been watching our channel and you haven't subscribed a long time ago, get that done, please. <laughs> subscribe. It's free. It doesn't hurt it, anything. You true. won't miss out. Yeah. Definitely. So, because I, I, you know, it's interesting. We get stats from YouTube, and we have a lot of people who watch our channel, uh, but they're not subscribed. And and it's funny because then a lot of times people say, "Well, I thought I subscribed to that channel a long time <laughs> I ago." I never did. But I watch it all the time. <laughs> so anyway, we're just we're we're doing our subscribe pitch. That's all we're doing. We would like to be part of our keto family. We, and it does it does help us know what content is being viewed so that yeah. we can continue to put up things that people are enjoying and wanting to see. Yeah. And then we do new recipes every Sunday. Um, so, yeah. Subscribe. Hit the bell so you can know when we put out rec new recipes. Because lately you've content. been doing it a, a bit early. Yeah, you, you know what? I'm still gonna always say it's, it's on Sunday. Because <laughs> you like that little cushion. Sunday it gives the me. I always time. say that they're always that they're on Sunday because it gives me a cushion. If we're somewhere, you know, we were traveling, it gives me a cushion. Hopefully, all the videos, soon. most of the videos go up at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's that's on Saturday night. Uh, but we always say that with the videos, for sure, will always be up on Sunday, and that's no matter if we're in Hawaii or we're in Korea or wherever, the video is going to be live for sure on every Sunday. So anyway, hit the bell, subscribe. We'd love to see you back here, and we hope that you have a great rest of the week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Peace.